okay? So over here, we have our horizontal pull. Over here, we have our vertical pull. Over here, we have our horizontal press. And over here, we have our vertical press. So everything's nicely balanced. Here, we have a movement that's going to um, stimulate more of the posterior chain. So specifically, we want to do a bent knee deadlift. And on this side, we want to keep the trunk more upright to influence more of the anterior chain. It's more of a quad dominant uh, activity. So here we will perform a heel elevated back squat. Okay. Um, as far as the unilateral movements, if we're using a barbell on the back, we will use a dumbbell forward step up. And if we're going with barbell back, barbell low, dumbbell low, here we will use a low cable split squat. So we have different positions, different implements, uh, different forms of resistance, okay? So everything is nicely balanced, okay? Now as we move on to the next two pairs, we're gonna start here with an elbow flexion exercise. So I'm going to insert an incline hammer curl, okay? And since this is a stretch position um, exercise for the elbow flexors, I'm going to insert a stretch position exercise for the elbow extensors or for triceps. And that would be a rope French press, okay, in this pair. Um, and now the reason why I'm using a hammer curl here and a French press here is because the chin-up is utilizing a supinated uh, grip, so the hammer curl will be utilizing obviously a neutral grip. If we have a neutral grip on this end with the seated cable roll, I am going to use here a seated Zotman curl, which is a combination of sup supinated uh, grip on the positive and a pronated grip on the negative. So we really utilize all different grips with our elbow flexion work, okay? And the antagonist, somewhat of, of an antagonist to this exercise would be a simple cable press down. And here I would favor a straight bar pronated grip, okay? Now, C2 on day one, if we're more anteriorly motivated up here, we will go with a uh, posterior chain exercise such as the back extension here. And the antagonist, somewhat of an antagonist to that movement would be hip flexion. So we'll utilize a Swiss ball crunch over here to counter it. And on this end, since we started with the posterior chain movement followed by the abdominal movement we'll reverse the order here and here we'll start with a two leg lower uh, lowering exercise as C2 and its antagonist would be a reverse hyperextension as D2 okay so you see here we start with the abdominal one that stimulates more of the lower abdominal um, and then it's almost exact antagonist here. Uh, the opposite movement would be the reverse hyperextension. Here it's the opposite, okay? So here we have back extension and, um, or trunk extension and then trunk flexion, right? And since we started with the elbow flexors on C1, we will start with the elbow extensors on C1 of day two. Okay, as far as the parameters are concerned, typically you will perform three to four sets of each exercise, um, three sets for beginners, and up to four sets for advanced trainees, at least on the A and B exercises. The reps will be in the 10 to 12 uh, bracket range. And the tempo typically will be anywhere from three to four seconds of lowering 
to one second of raising with no pause in between, although that will vary on some of the exercises. For instance, on the step up, uh, it may be a one second down, pause, one second up, pause. So it would be a one, 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 one tempo. On the back extension, for instance, I may implement a two, zero, one, two tempo, two seconds down, no pause, one second up, and pause for two seconds at the top. But typically, each repetition will take anywhere from four to five seconds, okay? And as far as rest, here we'll utilize a 60-second uh, rest interval. And this is a typical uh, program for body composition. This will work extremely well. If you stay on this for a three to four week period, um, your clients will do very well.